Thank you very much, Professor Leila. Thank you, Chairpersons. Thank you, my dear Professor Amal Bishlawi, for inviting me to this always successful event. This is nutrition. Damashal Asha Lista. Okay. I will go rapidly. It's, it's, a, it's, I believe I'm going to discuss a, an important topic, but it's, 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 and it's basic life. Nutrition is increasingly recognized by care providers as important for patients with thalassemia. And uh, is there a special diet for thalassemia? Is there a special diet for thalassemia? Uh, I'm going to put for you first the recommendations of the Children's Hospital and Research Center, Auckland, in the United States, concerning the iron. They have put it uh, what's, what's in the dark. Non-transfused patients are encouraged to consume moderately low iron diet that's avoiding iron-fortified foods and excessive consumption of red meat. In their recommendation in the United States that transfused patients on chelation therapy means well-transfused patients on good chelation therapy. A low iron diet is unnecessary and may decrease the quality of life of some patients because this may interfere with the uh, availability of other types of foods like zinc. And in their recommendation for their population, they, say, they explain this why. Because the amount of iron obtained from just one unit of packed red cells, which is 200 milligrams, uh, it outweighs the amount of iron obtained from an 85 uh, gram stick, 100 milligram iron. Yes, but this doesn't fit for us and for conditions like our, where the uh, pre-transfusion hemoglobin of the patients may be uh, seven grams per deciliter or six grams per deciliter. These patients, they do have still an increased intestinal iron absorption. And these patients with beta thalassemia measure should go on uh, iron intake restriction because they can absorb daily five grams per day iron instead of the usual two grams per day. So when you look to the recommendation, uh, the, the up one is the USA guidelines, but this, the, the red one is which goes with our uh, circumstances are the TIF guidelines. So now there is uh, a, a change of the dietitians and nutritionists caring of uh, thalassemia. Uh, it's a priority uh, to uh, avoid iron-rich diets, but also there is getting more priority and concentrating on a more well-balanced diet rich in antioxidants and minerals. I, I enjoyed the, uh, the, the, the presentation of the antioxidants. Thank you, doctor. Uh, why are patients with thalassemia at risk of nutritional deficiencies? Because they have a lower intake. They are tired. They have poor appetite, poor intake. Uh, they consume uh, empty calories. Empty calories is uh, what uh, children eat, like uh, containing uh, extra sugars, extra fats, uh, cookies, with uh, juices, with uh, drinks. All of these are what's called empty calories. Uh, the food intolerances, like lactose, I should say, lactose intolerance per se, is not specific to thalassemia patients. And avoidance of certain foods like uh, high uh, iron foods, like organic uh, meat and beef, this is going to limit the intake of zinc and limit the intake of protein. And also, the, uh, because the, we ask them to have tea after meals, they are going to replace the nutrient-dense beverages with tea. We, uh, so this is, this is not the, the best intake. Nausea cramping from the use of oral chelators may lead to missed meal. Uh, and also, there is, it is well reported that there is an increased energy expenditure in thalassemia patients, especially in the less transfused patients. Uh, there are increased losses of minerals, uh, the uh, zincuria, or hyperzincuria from uh, chelation therapy. There is increased iron in the body leads to increased oxidative stress and consumption of the uh, antioxidants. 
So by the end, we have that the, uh, the intake is less than the expenditure and we get nutrient deficiencies. And nutrition plays, and uh, what I'm going to stress on uh, is uh, the nutrition plays an important role in three common comorbidities in patients with thalassemia, low bone mass, growth deficiency, and diabetes. So let's look to this uh, uh, risk factors for low bone mass in thalassemia, apart from the uh, hypogonadism, hypothyroidism, ineffective erythropoiesis, iron toxicity, diabetes, uh, low insulin growth factor one, uh, and uh, genetic uh, uh, mutations of collagen and vitamin D receptor, there are nutritional factors. Vitamin D deficiency, vitamin K deficiency, whole body lean mass deficits and whole body fat mass deficits um, reflecting the, uh, the protein and the caloric intake, as well as zinc deficiency. It takes level two. So I have for the lobo mass, it's lobo mass is multifactorial, but there are nutritional factors playing important roles, especially zinc and especially vitamin D. Concerning the growth deficiency, growth deficiency in thalassemia is related mainly to anemia, uh, iron toxicity, uh, growth hormone deficiency, uh, desferoxamine, chronic liver disease, but nutritional factors are important for growth deficiency, like inadequate caloric intake, inadequate protein intake, zinc deficiency, and folate deficiency. The third comorbidity important in thalassemia is diabetes. Diabetes in thalassemia risk factor is toxicity of the iron to the islets of Langerhans, concomitant liver disease and or hepatitis C, family history of diabetes, but still zinc is mentioned as important risk factor for the development of diabetes in thalassemia. So I'm going to speak about just two uh, micronutrients. I'm going to speak about zinc and health in thalassemia patients. I am refreshing our knowledge. This is what I am uh, making. Uh, what are the causes of zinc deficiency in thalassemia and what's the situation? In the United States, zinc deficiency is documented in 15 to 30 percent of both transfused and non-transfused patients with thalassemia. Due to low dietary zinc intake, elevated requirements for zinc due to increased nutrient turnover, due to depletion of circulating zinc, uh, due to proximal renal tubular damage hyperzincoria, uh, where the urinary zinc is fourfold increased uh, in thalassemia compared to controls, and also the use of chelators to treat iron overload puts these patients at high risk of zinc deficiency. And the very important is they found a significant inverse correlation between the liver iron content and the blood concentrations of zinc. It was very well described that in iron overloaded patients, certain nutrients like zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin E are either endogenously consumed at a higher rates or sequestered within the liver. Means that even if the intake of the patient is adequate, however, the serum levels are low. He is functionally deficient in these nutrients. So what's the importance of zinc? Optimum immune function, optimum growth. It's important for bone health and maybe uh, uh, protective for bone fractures. It's important for pubertal development and has a role in glucose homeostasis and prevention of diabetes. So it's very important. And supplementation with zinc in patients with thalassemia was found to result in improved growth and increased bone mass in at-risk patients with thalassemia. Tabanana, zinc deficiency, all of these are altered, so you get growth failure, hypogonadism, reduced immune function, glucose intolerance, low bone mineral density. Why I am saying that? Because zinc is cheap. Zinc is available. كل الناس أخذت زنك في الفترة بتاعت الكوفيد. Okay? And if it can contribute, it can improve the health of these patients, that's great. Okay, and this is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the articles, and they showed that uh, it is an 18-month double-blind multicenter randomized placebo-controlled trial 
of zinc supplementation in subjects with thalassemia and lobomas aged 6 to 30 years. Uh, and uh, if we are going to look to this, this is the whole body mass composition with percentage change from the baseline. The uh, placebo and these are the patients who did receive the zinc supplementation after 12 months and after 18 months. As you see, patients who had zinc supplementation, they developed a significant increase in their uh, whole body uh, bone mineral capacity. And on the other side, looking also to this lateral spine uh, bone mineral uh, composition, I'm so sorry, it's bone mineral composition, also those who had zinc supplementation, they developed significantly better values than the placebo. So patients with thalassemia, they require more zinc than the healthy individuals. If these are the requirements of the healthy individuals, it has been said that uh, patients uh, with uh, thalassemia who uh, are zinc deficient, they may need 10 to 25 milligrams per day zinc supplement for three months, at which time serum zinc should be retested. Where zinc is in our food, you see oyster, crab, it's okay, expensive. Uh, cereal, chicken, yogurt, peanuts, all these are good foods, but they are not available for everyone. So, uh, when you give zinc, you may, you want to say, okay, whether my patient is zinc deficient or uh, my patient is uh, zinc replete, he has normal values. Assessment of the zinc level depends on the age, it is in the morning or it is in the evening, it is uh, fasting or it is non-fasting. So it should be properly tested and compared to uh, values in the, uh, the same circumstances. But the point in zinc supplementation uh, is that we should give the lowest dose of zinc supplement to improve the zinc status and maintain the serum copper level because this is the possibility of zinc interfering with the absorption of copper or copper being extracted by chelation therapy during supplementation, serum copper should be monitored and kept above 70 microgram per deciliter. It is reported that patients with thalassemia also do have low serum copper. Uh, in addition to supplementation, patients are encouraged to identify and consume zinc-rich foods. What's our situation? Hayana, I looked in the published literature uh, about our uh, zinc status in Egypt. Let me tell you, Hadratkum Kulina Bnaud, the environment scientific Kitir, Obnesma and El Masruin, and Dom Zinc Deficiency. I have, I have seen nothing published on zinc deficiency. I looked at this. This is uh, daily per capita amounts of energy zinc and phytates in the diets of people in 178 countries. I hope in Hatib Abayna, but it's so simple. I am going to say this. Uh, let's compare. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Let's compare West Europe and USA to the um, North Africa and Mediterranean regions. What what you are going to find concerning zinc? Uh, this is this. Uh, it is milligram per capita, 12.4 and 12.2. Here we speak of 8.7. Uh, here we speak of the phytates. There are phytates. It's 1,500 almost in this uh, diet. Here we have the phytates. I believe it is, oh, and I cannot see it, but it is 2,000 point Hega. Increased phytate to zinc ratio, this is going to interfere with the absorption of zinc. So if we look down the estimated percentage of population at risk for low zinc intake, in the uh, Europe, it's 8%. In USA, it's 0.9%. In our population, is 73%. So we are a population where the healthy individuals are at risk of zinc deficiency. So we should consider our thalassemia patients. They may need zinc supplementation. And I'm going to enter in the next micronutrient. I'm going to discuss two micronutrients. Zinc and vitamin D, because both of them, they were important for the uh, main morbidities of thalassemia. Vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, okay. inadequate circulating levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D in patients with thalassemia has been reported extensively in the literature, even 
in apparently well-nourished patients and well-managed patients. This may result from defective hydroxylation in the liver due to iron overload, chronic viral hepatitis, defective intestinal absorption, defective exocrine pancreatic functions, increased catabolism of vitamin D metabolites, disturbances in vitamin D binding proteins, or in simply inadequate intake or lack of exposure to the sunshine. And these are uh, two studies. One of them we have made it here in Egypt, okay? And it was done in, uh, it was published 2011. 95 polytransfused Egyptians, uh, 13 to 30 years, they had all thalassemia major. In them, 45% had normal 25 hydroxy vitamin D. We are speaking mainly, the, their, their mean age was 17 years. Uh, 20, uh, 33 had a level two standard deviation below the mean, and 22 had level three standard deviation below the mean. If you look to the other, uh, and I don't know if this is the best way, Nama, if you look to this, this is in the United States, in the North America, 97 salicymics, age 3.6 to 59 years, with their mean age of 25 years. And they have, and uh, uh, this is transfusion dependent, uh, uh, transfusion independent, and these are hemoglobin H disease, okay? And uh, this, uh, the, the, let's see, this is patients having a vitamin D level below 20 nanogram per uh, ml, uh, and 20 nanogram per ml is severe deficiency. You see, this we have almost more than 60% of hemoglobin H have severe vitamin D deficiency, although they are apparently well nourished. 50% in uh, thalassemia transfusion independent and about 30% of transfusion dependent thalassemia. So even in the Western countries with what looks like well uh, nourished, they still do have vitamin D deficiency. And that's why this study, they tried to, uh, they said, okay, these patients were given 400 to uh, 1,000 uh, international units of vitamin D per day, okay? So we are going to give what's called supervised intermittent high-dose oral vitamin D, 50,000 units every three weeks in transfusion-dependent thalassemics. So they give it every three weeks. On the day they come for transfusion, they receive the 50,000 units every three weeks. And as you see, this was done for four to six months. And as you see, there was increase in the vitamin D. It was variable from one patient to the other. There was individual variations. And they have put, the most important of this study is that each dose, uh, this mega dose, increased the vitamin D level by 1.4 plus or minus two nanogram per ml. And regardless of the vitamin D or the duration, the D baseline, or the duration of the supplement, no level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D exceeded 80 nanogram per ml, and this means safety. Safety is very important. Okay, uh, and they advise that patients should be tested annually, and if the uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D less than 20 nanogram per ml, they should be supplemented with the 50,000 units every three weeks the, at time of transfusion. This equals, equals تقريباً 2380 units per day. Oh, 2380 units per day, is it a big dose? لا, I should tell حضراتكم, بس قبل ما خلص, this should go on for six to eight doses. I should tell حضراتكم, and this is the vitamin D dietary reference intakes by life stage. It was published uh, 2011 by the Institute of Medicine in the United States, and they said that الخنا الأخيرة خالص اللي هي ال 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 upper limit of the doses. لو عدينا يعني بعد السنة ال upper limit of the dose ألف خمسمية. Uh, لغاية أربع سنين تلات آلاف uh, I believe من تسع سنين بنتكلم على أربع تلاف and in adults أربع تلاف يبقى لو هنتكلم على ألفين وتلتميت units per day أنا I did not reach the upper dose لو الطفل بتاعي فوق ال uh, لو الطفل بتاعي فوق السنة لأن ال upper limit في السنة is ألفين وخمسمية Okay so 
why preventing and treating vitamin D deficiency in thalassemia? Because uh, adequate circulating levels are essential for optimal skeletal health, reduced fracture risk, uh, with negative correlation between 25 hydroxy vitamin D and spine bone mineral density. وحاجة مهمة جدا which is uh, uh, recognized now and there is uh, in the vitamin D deficiency is associated with cardiac iron loading in thalassemia major and the association between vitamin D deficiency and elevated myocardial iron deposition and impaired cardiac ejection fraction is thalassemia is of increasing interest and there are more and more uh, paper published in this field even in, in adults and even in pediatrics and this could result that in the presence of vitamin D deficiency uh, there is modulation of the calcium signaling in the heart and this could be to some extent related to also also to hypoparathyroidism. So removing this modifiable risk factor vitamin D deficiency may improve long-term bone health but also quality of life and cardiac health in aging patients with thalassemia, علشان, and I should say in this vitamin D deficiency uh, in the study they made in the United States, which I have so shown, uh, revealed that vitamin D deficiency increases with getting older age. Yani, adult thalassemics are liable to vitamin D deficiency. This is very important. لأن إحنا كلنا عارفين الأكسترا بون إفكتس في فيتامين دي من ضمنها البروتكشن أجينست كانسر من ضمنها إميونيتي and many others. Okay, uh, so um, let's go to this. Iron overload and elevated liver iron content play an important role in circulating nutrient levels. As I said, iron overload uh, will, will uh, affect the circulating levels of vitamin C, vitamin E, and zinc. And certain proteins in the liver may serve as trapped nutrients in iron overloaded conditions, what's called functional iron deficiency. So how to manage nutritional deficiencies in, in addition to supplementation? Treat iron overload, good chelation. Uh, also, we are, should look to the urinary losses and chelator-induced excretion of minerals, which may play a role in functional nutritional deficiencies. And also the dietary guidelines for thalassemia patients, they should be different from the standard dietary guidelines because thalassemia patients, they may be at increased needs of certain micronutrients, as, uh, as I have shown. And uh, because of the uh, risk of multinutrient deficiency, nutritional status should be assessed annually in the patients. And in this slide, this is a review article uh, which was published 2022 about nutrition in thalassemia in the uh, Journal of Pediatric Hematology Oncology. And they put this conclusion that routine supplementation with vitamin D and zinc is recommended in thalassemia, major or non-transfusion dependent thalassemia. This is my message, uh, uh, I believe. We, we are uh, looking to the guide, Egyptian guidelines of thalassemia care it is, uh, it is important, it is cheap, and it will have a, a good prognostic effect if you consider vitamin D and zinc in the uh, nutritional recommendations. Thank you very much. Shukran.